gentlemen here are having some trouble with these power converter. Um, I was out here last week, uh, looked at it, and it was working perfectly. Um, and uh, he, he called again and said it's it's just working intermittently. So um, I'm gonna do a little bit of checking. I mean, we're planning on switching it out today, uh, but I'm gonna do a little bit of checking just so that I can show you uh, uh, how you know the procedures for uh, checking your. This is gonna be a YFCO converter. All the converters, uh, whether Parallax or Teletech or whoever it is, they all work the same. They all look about the same. So, should, if you're having trouble with yours, it should uh, should be able to help you diagnose yours. All right, we're gonna get started. First thing you're doing when you want to work, work on a converter is isolate the battery, take it out of the system. So we're gonna take the we're gonna take the positive positive lead off so it won't be uh, will be influencing anything. We go to change the converter, we don't have to we don't have to worry about uh, shorting the wire out and making sparks and all that. Just take the positive post off, make sure it doesn't touch anything metal. I'll leave that right there. Then we're going to go inside. I'm actually just going to go ahead and test this battery uh, using a battery tester. Uh, this, this camper is set up permanent. The gentleman lives in it full time. So you don't, you don't need the battery. Uh, the only time you need the battery is if the power, if the, you know, the electrical power goes off in your community, you know, keep your lights and your refrigerator stuff running. But uh, if this battery seems iffy at all, uh, we're just going to leave it unhooked after we make the repairs today. And I'll tell him if he wants to, he can get a he can get a new battery later. So we're going to just hook. Red to positive, black to negative, test this battery. It's weak. It's not it's not terrible. Um, a lot of times I think a bad battery will will overwork the converter and cause issues. Um, this one doesn't seem to be too bad. Still probably won't hook it hook it back up when we're done just just because it is weak. So it could be overworking the converter. We'll get this cover off here so we can get to all the wiring and stuff that we need to get to. You need a power cut off for or anything? No, sir. It's fine. Just like it is. Get our multimeter out. Go to a ground. We want to make sure we've got AC power coming in first. So you see which wires coming out of the converter. That's the one. You can see we got 123 volt AC going in. And we switch our meter to DC. Go over here to the DC side. And now we have nothing. So this thing was working last week and now it's not working at all. So we got AC power going into the converter, the lower part of the converter where, where the converting happens. 
but we've got no DC power coming out then we have a bad converter just two screws hold this hold this converter together anymore two screws out All right. now you really should cut cut the power off but that would take all the fun out of it. We'll just cut that breaker off. Then we reach in here and get this wire loose. There's usually there's usually almost always something wire nutted to that. It's actually kind of piggybacking on that same breaker. Get her ground wire loose and her neutral. Make sure those don't touch anything. <laughs> that they shouldn't. We'll come down through that hole without letting them touch anything. And then we'll come over here. just a couple of tabs you're not gonna be able to see them hold this uh, hold this board in this is the power this is the wire coming out of the converter up here to the to the fuse block we'll get it loose and this should be the, the ground and we'll pop this board out those wires out we don't ever worry about them touching anything over here because we unhooked the battery a little bit ago work them down through the hole the lower part of the converter slides right out easier just go ahead and get the mm -hmm. get, get the wire started up in the holes before you slide that thing in it's got more room to work with just need to need to keep these from touching anything up here get our 12 volt wire started up in here Just slides back in there under a couple tabs. Hmm. And there you go. We'll hook our 12 volt Ain't stuff nothing. up first. Yeah, no, 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 not much to it. You got to get these wires bent, been around a very short radius to them in there where they belong and things can be a little bit tight trying to work with Here's 
our ground. And our positive. Let's see what I have to do. See what I have to do with these wires to make everything fit back in here. These block just goes under a couple tabs on top and just snaps in here. There we go, snap. Make sure everything's still nice and tight. Sometimes when you move that stuff around, it'll loosen up. All right, we're all good there. Come back over here, hook our ground wire back up. Tighten it up. Our neutral wire. Tighten it back up. Our hot wire breaker still off, so it's okay to, to reach in there. Don't want to touch nothing else. Tighten that up. While we're in here, since we got the tool right here in our hand, we're just going to, as long as you touch the handle, you're okay. We're just going to check and make sure everything else is snug in this, in this panel box. Because this stuff does. It can. It can work loose on you. It's not likely, but it can. Like I say, I mean, you should really cut your power off, but mm -hmm. I don't do that. That'd take all the fun out of it. And we didn't find anything loose. They even provide you with a wire nut to put that piggyback wire on there. Them wire nuts saved a lot of tape, didn't they? Yeah. And as always, when we do a wire nut, we always tug on both wires to make sure everything's secure. And it is. So, now, our multimeter's on the DC scale. You need to use the ground wire here, the ground wire over here, it doesn't matter. Mm. We're just going to go ahead and grab this one for right now. Flip that breaker back on. And, converter's putting out 13.7. 13.7, which is perfect. So, we're going to put a little bit of load on it here just to test it, but I think everything's going to be fine. Alright, we have load tested it, turned all the lights on, and uh, it's it went to like 13.62 or something. So, we're good. We're going to button it up. Uh, just going to Stick these two screws in. Hold that base, hold that bottom part in. I think the holes are actually, yeah, there's no nuts in there. Just drop the screw in, that'll keep it from sliding around. That one seems like it's still got a nut. Alright, 
Well, there you have it. That's uh, replacing your just the lower section of your YFCO power converter. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and uh, you know, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, you know, comments. Constructive criticism is is always wanted. So. Uh, just uh, again, thanks for watching. We're going to go to the next one. All right. This is actually, I've left that job. And uh, I always think of so many great things to say as soon as I pack up the camera and pull out, you know. But uh, just to let you know what's going on. Uh, yeah, I was on that job uh, last week. This is Monday. Uh, and the gentleman told me that, you know, that. He was a little bit confused. He was telling me that I was, I, I thought I was going over to work on a generator. I thought he was in a class C motor home. It wasn't the generator at all. It was a, it was a converter. Um, but while I was there, it was functioning properly. I said, I asked him, I said, now I have one on the truck. You know, you, you does seem like, you know, you've been having trouble with this one. This one is working right now. I said, I have one on the truck. Do you want me to change it? No. No, if that one's working, he said it might have just been a fluke. Anyhow, so we got it changed, and it is functioning properly, and I'm happy with the repair. And no, I didn't charge him any a trip charge or any labor to go back over there. He's an old, a very good customer, been been a good customer for 13, 14 years. Um, so I took care of him. And uh, I'm like I said, I'm happy with the repair. So now we're going to the next one. So thank you.